Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. The Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Join holistic health and life coach Melissa Rolfs as she unravels the path to freedom from the relentless struggle with food in episode 89. Can you guide someone through a process if you haven't if you haven't had that challenge yourself? Yeah, that's a great point. I have a client that I worked with actually, and that was the situation she was in with her daughter. The mom never struggled with food. It wasn't an issue for her, but her daughter did. And so she was like, can you help her? And I was able to, because I think it's hard when it's your own child. You don't want to say something to them that will hurt them or affect them negatively down the road or affect how they view themselves. So I feel like it's a really find place if you haven't had that experience like you said to kind of be able to share that with someone so I think that's where someone like a coach or a therapist or somebody from the outside can come in and really kind of help with that so that you can have that good relationship with your daughter and it doesn't become a point of contention. The Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch from charlenelynch.com. Healing Through Love is here to help victims and survivors of domestic and family violence find their way back to living a more meaningful life. We interview experts and survivors who share their personal stories and offer advice to those who've experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their healing journey. As well as the Healing Through Love podcast, we hold annual Pamper Days here in Adelaide, South Australia for survivors of domestic and family violence, where local businesses come together and pay it forward to provide their services and their resources for a day of of indulgence. Think day spa on steroids. It's spectacular. And we're so proud that Healing Through Love has gone global. And currently we have eight locations on the planet that are going to be holding these beautiful pamper days to Healing Through Love. And we're excited. If this resonates with you, please reach out to us at Healing Through Love. We'd love to have a conversation about you being a participant. Now, every week we have amazing guests and this week is no different. We have Melissa Rolf with us. She is a certified holistic health and life coach and helping busy mums and teen girls find freedom from their struggles with food so that they can be at peace with food, their bodies and their lives. She's committed to empowering women to break free from dieting and emotional eating and self-image issues so that they can ditch the diet mentality and feel empowered in their own skin. Hello, Melissa. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Oh, so am I. And I know for many of our listeners, this is really going to resonate with them. Now, this is something that obviously you've had personal connection to, because this is not a topic you would pick unless you had that level of emotional connection. So are you okay, Melissa, to tell us your story? Yes, of course, I'd love to. So for me, I had childhood trauma and food very much became how I handled that. I remember being eight years old and hiding cookies and candies and different sugary treats in my room. And I think it was kind of my way to try to push down the feelings because I was a child. I didn't know how to handle what was happening around me. And so food very quickly became my go-to. It carried with me throughout high school and into college and into marriage and having children. And finally getting, I wasn't diagnosed with PTSD until I was older and married and had children, but that diagnosis really changed me and helped me discover holistic healing and really how I could support myself and work through the trauma with a whole person focus. And so that's really what propelled me to do what I do now. And that's a very brief overview for you. (laughs) That is a very brief overview. So how Melissa, do people know that they've got a a challenge with eating? How does a mother know that she's got challenges? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime we turn to food for something beyond nourishing us and giving us energy, which is kind of what it's intended for, 
we know that maybe our relationship with food is a little bit skewed. Maybe we're turning to it for comfort or to feel better or because we're bored or because we're overwhelmed or we're trying to push things down. So I think really the first step is to ask yourself, why do I turn to food? Am I really hungry or am I using it for something else? Mm. So not everybody puts on weight. Not everybody, that's the outcome for them. So for me, yes, <laughs> uh, eating too much will definitely end up that way. But I have got friends who are very slight, but they still eat so much more than I do. So so the outcome, I suppose, doesn't have to be that we um, are putting on weight. It can be that we have got a challenged relationship with with food, Yeah. 100%. We're turning to it for emotional support or in times of stress. And so really the purpose of food is to nourish us, to energize us, to help us live our lives. But anytime we use it for something other than that, it, it's time to maybe just dig a little deeper. <laughs> I love it. I am a total foodie. Uh, if you have mm -hmm. a look at any of my Facebook feeds, you'll see lots and lots of pictures of food. We eat out a lot and we express our love through food. So we, yes. where we have friends over and we do dinner parties consistently because we just love that sharing our love through food. So, yeah, and we like to have dining experiences and eat out at different places and have that beautiful experience that you can have. So, yeah, there is a lot more to food, but you're right. It is there to, to nourish us and to support us as humans. I love it. So with a mother's relationship with their daughter, if maybe a mother's got her stuff sorted, but her daughter might not. You know, how do, you know, if you've got your weight under control as a mother, but your daughter doesn't, how do you broach those conversations in and around that? Because, can you guide someone through a process if you haven't if you haven't had their challenge yourself? Yeah, that's a great point. I have a client that I worked with actually, and that was the situation she was in with her daughter. The mom never struggled with food. It wasn't an issue for her, but her daughter did. And so she was like, can you help her? And I was able to, because I think it's hard when it's your own child. You don't want to say something to them that will hurt them or affect them negatively down the road or affect how they view themselves. So I feel like it's a really fine place if you haven't had that experience like you said to kind of be able to share that with someone so I think that's where someone like a coach or a therapist or somebody from the outside can come in and really kind of help with that so that you can have that good relationship with your daughter and it doesn't become a point of contention yeah so yeah it, it can become a point of contention can't it if they're both um, on different journeys there so um so if we've identified we've got a challenge with food for most of us, it would be that we're putting on weight. Is that correct, Melissa? Yeah. It could be. I mean, it could be that we're putting on weight or maybe we're doing what I did and living off of sugar and you're exhausted because you're not getting the nutrition that you need. Um, it might show up in your moods because food affects moods. So it really can show up in a couple of ways beyond just the weight. Yeah, I know um, when I was modeling, it, I would eat, but I would throw up. So like, I, yeah, I'd still ate. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but I would get rid of it because I just didn't want it to end up on my hips. So, so I suppose there's, it, it is fundamentally all about the relationship with food, which is fundamentally all about the relationship with us, isn't it? With ourselves. So you're a relationship coach really uh, on every level. I love it. Okay. So Melissa, uh, you know, obviously you've been on this journey yourself and you had some challenges and you've now have found the solution and you share that with others. Can you share some of this part of the process with us so that we can have a better understanding of some tools and techniques that we can use? Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing that was really powerful for me was learning to love myself. And that's why I love what you're doing because it's healing through love. And I think that's how we heal is we heal through love. We don't heal through hate. We don't heal through, you know, beating ourselves up, which is what a lot of us do around food or our weight or the scale. And so really, I think acknowledging yourself that you matter, that you're worth taking care of, that you are worthy of love, safety, and belonging, I think is really foundational. And so when you have that belief and that's your come from, you show up differently. You're going to you know, honor yourself with how you eat and how much sleep you get. And so I love just the basics of self-care, which would be for me, sleep, make sure your body's getting enough sleep every night because that affects so much. Make sure that you are nourishing your body. You're getting fruits and vegetables and, you know, meats and a variety of foods that are going to energize you. I think making sure that you're hydrated 
you need to stay hydrated. I think the next thing is to move your body because movement is so important for all aspects of health. And then finally, I think slow down, give yourself time and space to process. So many of us go at warp speed and we don't really give ourselves time to eat or to chew or to even maybe sit with our thoughts. And that's a really foundational part of the process of, as well. So I think just those basics are things that people can implement for free today that they will see a change if they do those things. Yeah, I love it. So for us, one of the major changes was to sit not in the lounge room to eat. So for myself and my partner, we've chosen different locations, either outside or at the breakfast bar or at the dining room table, but sitting sitting to eat and enjoying the process. And that's changed how many times we chew. It's changed um, our own frequency because we're in a state of relaxation and receiving rather than just getting the job done and shoveling it in. And, uh, and we're very conscious of the food that we're eating uh, as opposed to sometimes when we first met, we were frequently just like eating in front of the television, which uh, I think fundamentally made us unhealthy uh, because of the way we weren't really consciously thinking about the food. And even the sitting position when you're sitting on a couch is different than that up more upward position for eating. Um, and yeah, on every level, it's made a huge difference. I love it. So wow, Melissa. So I, I absolutely believe this, that we do need that level of hydration. We do need some level of movement. We need to have that level of consciousness about the food that we're eating and have and why we're eating it as well. And uh, yeah, I love it. So, and now you've written a book through your, from your journey and how you've got through this process and how you are um, helping people now. So can you tell us a little bit more about the book? Like, what's the book title? Yeah, absolutely. It's called Finding Freedom and it's how to overcome your obstacles to live a healthy and fulfilled life. And it really kind of outlines my story a little bit more in depth, but then I love it too, because I outline the steps that I took exactly along the way to find that healing and that transformation. There's some journal pages so people can work through it like a workbook and really apply what I did to find freedom to their own lives as well. Mm, I love it. So I'm going to ask you, uh, what are your thought processes in around intermittent fasting? Because we've been doing it since 2018. I love it. It just suits my lifestyle, my frequency, my energy, how I like to do life. But uh, are you an advocate for it? I'm just curious. I love exactly what you said. It works for you. It works for your lifestyle. There's no one size fits all. And I think that's kind of where we've been led astray as we've been marketed all of these ways of eating to the masses. But the key is to find what works for you and your body and your lifestyle. And if you found something that's working for you, amazing. <laughs> so whether I'm a fan or not, it's not mine to say because it's working for you and that's what suits you. And that's what it's about. I love it. Yes, like it gives us more time in the morning to hydrate. Um, so lemon water, um, I drink green tea, he drinks coffee, but that's okay. I still love him. Um, so but we it gives us more time. We're not we're not forced into a routine of eating. There's we've got more time for us, of walks, meditation, prayer, things to give us more up time back to us before we start the busy day. And uh and also even when we travel, well, that's not completely true. When we travel quite frequently, we will have breakfast Um, because isn't that the way it's really designed? So you'll get breakfast at the hotel that you're staying. So they sort of set it up that way. So we might eat breakfast, but we might then not eat lunch and just have dinner. But we've found that the less meals we eat, well, I, I've found, and, and my partner as well, that I don't know, but I think we're getting younger. Mm. It's like the body takes so much energy and effort to consume food and I think that we've been told we need so much of it, but we probably need less, um, at least maybe serving sizes, because uh, I've spent some time in America and I can tell you the serving sizes are massive. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Whereas when we go to Asia, the serving sizes, they might serve you a large plate, but it's to serve six people. So it, it and you know, it's it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. So I love it. Okay, so. Uh, inside of your book it takes you through the processes and dives deep into all of this and also allows us to do the journaling which lives a, a level of consciousness in and around our food as well um is there special foods or that we should be or shouldn't be looking at like is there is that something that we need to have a look at on an individual basis or is that uh like okay sugar is a perfect example talk to me about sugar 
Yeah, that's a great one. So I, I'm a firm believer in you need to do what's best for your unique body type. So that's, there are going to be foods that give you energy that might not give me energy. So really kind of listen to and honor and respect your body. But overall, I can say sugar is something that, that the vast majority of people could do better off avoiding. <laughs> as well as artificial sweeteners for that matter. Anything that has been processed that has artificial, you know, ingredients, you don't understand what's on the label, just best to kind of steer clear from that. Our bodies were not designed to eat foods that way. They were designed to eat foods in their most natural state, which would be fruits and vegetables and nuts and meats. And just depending on the processing, I think is where we get kind of led astray. Yes, on every level. Um, I did, uh, I did keto for a while and that helped me shift my addiction to sugar, which was obvious <laughs> from the amount of sugar that I had. But my beautiful mother got early onset dementia in 2014. And then what I noticed is the amount of sugar that she had in her life, uh, like just on a daily basis. And that that started to heighten my awareness that maybe there's a chance that this could be sugar related. Um, and so then I really, for the next couple of years, worked on my sugar. It still didn't fix it because obviously an addiction is something challenging to shift. But then I went keto and really it, it broke the tie to sugar. Uh, so now I like I just enjoy just tea as it is. I won't say black tea because it's actually green tea and that just seems counterintuitive. <laughs> but it's no milk, no sugar, uh, green tea. <laughs> I love it. And I noticed the difference how I, before I couldn't enjoy it, but now I really, I enjoy it. And I think that speaks also to just food and frequency is that when we enjoy it, I don't know that we consume it differently. What do you think, Melissa? We totally do. We totally do. And our taste buds can change. That's the other thing. Like our bodies are amazing and they're always changing. The foods that we eat are affecting them differently. Our taste buds are changing. So I think it's really kind of knowing what works best for you. And when it works for you, you're going to enjoy it more because you're not going to suffer later. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. I love it. And even just the little things like starting the day with, you know, room temperature water with lemon in it. For us, that's been, it's, it's a nice refreshing way. And uh, in those early hours before we sort of get connected to social media, other electronic things, just um, to help us just get connected to ourselves as well. But hydration is so important. I really think it's probably one of the biggest things. Um, as a, a, a person who does uh, skincare, so I did have a beauty business for more than three decades, is that I, um, like I just noticed the difference that as soon as I started drinking more fluid, my skin was better. And then I noticed with my clients, as soon as they started drinking more water, regardless of the skincare they're using, probably no one from the skincare industry is going to want to hear that, their skin improved as well. So I feel that fundamentally, um, not just Australians, but pretty much on the planet, people don't drink enough fluid. And um, yeah, what do you think, Melissa? Absolutely. And the fun thing about dehydration is that can mimic a sugar craving. So you may think that you're actually craving sugar. And in reality, you might just be dehydrating some more water. Mm. So true. So true. I love it. Okay. So we've got this beautiful book, Finding Freedom, and that's all in and about healing that relationship with food. Is that right, Melissa? Fundamentally? Yes. And all the tools and techniques that you share from your journey. And now as a professional coach, helping people really have a better relationship with food, and then consequently their health and their fitness and obviously their weight as well, if that's all connected. And uh, and this is available on Amazon. So now we've got the link and it will be in the show notes and it'll also be in the show description as well so that you can reach into that. And uh, and so you can have a look at it. So I'm looking forward to reading the book. It sounds fabulous. Uh, how long would you say it takes most people to read? Oh my goodness, not very long. I have it right here. This is, It's not very big. <laughs> Look at that. That's something you can knock off on a weekend. 100%. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, do people, do you take clients? How, how do you ordinarily assist people? I sure do. I do private one-on-one -on -one coaching with people and help them find freedom from their struggle with food. I love that. And so do you do only local people or online or how do people normally connect to you? All over. I'm virtual, baby. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. And so they connect you through your website? Mm -hmm, absolutely. 
Okay, so the website links will also be in the show notes and also in the show description so that you can reach out to Melissa and have a conversation with her. I love it. Now, Melissa, I'd just love if you could, in closing, just could you have a share with our audience some words of wisdom uh, in and around your journey and uh, how, you know, this the power of healing your relationship with food? Yeah, I think I just want people to know that they are not stuck, like regardless of what you've been through, what's happened to you, what, what, where you've come from, you don't have to stay there. That doesn't define you. You can heal and move forward and create the life that you always wanted. And I think that a lot of people just need to have permission to hear that. And so I'm giving you permission. I love it. I love it. We're getting permission from Melissa. I love it. So yeah, it's so true is that this is something so foundational. Look, if we don't eat, we die. That's pretty much how life is. So this is like a foundational element of life. And our relationship with food sometimes is damaged because we're not dealing with other emotional issues. And then we reach to food to sort of fulfill that gap. And uh, when we can sort that out and get to the bottom of it too. So, Melissa, probably something that we didn't cover off is that we can go on these fad diets, we can go on these fad fixes because some of them aren't just diets, they're exercise programs and about a 1,000 other things in between. But if you don't get to the root cause of what's causing the relationship with food is that you, like you can even have surgery Mm -hmm. and if you don't, haven't resolved that um, the core issue, then it will come back, yeah? So no amount of um, Band-Aids will fix this. What you do need to take is the time, effort, and energy to connect to self and and really dive in deep to this relationship with food. Isn't that right, Melissa? You nailed it. (laughs) I love it, I love it, I love it. So, wow, thank you so much for spending time with us today on this beautiful journey. And your book is amazing and we'll pop those details there. And, you know, when you're feeling a connection here to Melissa, please reach out. Her details for her website will be in the show notes and the description so you can reach out and have a conversation with her. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Melissa. And from uh, goodbye from us and Melissa. And uh, just if you are listening today and you feel that you do want to make a connection with Healing Through Love, please reach out with us. Uh, if you're local to South Australia, we'd love to have you participate in our next Healing Through Love Pamper Day. And if you're abroad, please still reach out because we have eight different locations around the world and we would love to have extra practitioners or If you're a survivor yourself, please, we would love to have you come and attend as a guest for free at one of our pamper days that are around the world. It's been a blessing to hold this space with you today and dive in deep to our relationship to food. That's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Melissa. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.